Okay, hello. Hello everyone, my name is Ben. Uh, I'm an iOS engineer at Yelp, and I'm really excited to be here at the first iOS comp in Singapore. Uh, so today I'm gonna talk to you all about Grand Central Dispatch, or GCD. Uh, it's a technology that we use really heavily in the Yelp app uh, to help keep the app responsive, and I'm gonna share with you all some techniques that we use to do that. Uh, but first, just by a show of hands, uh, who here has used Yelp before? Cool. Uh, well, for those of you who don't know, uh, Yelp's mission is just to help people connect with uh, great local businesses. Uh, so just a bit more about Yelp. Uh, every month, Yelp sees 83 million unique visitors uh, come to Yelp from mobile. Uh, and since Yelp's inception, uh, its users have contributed more than 83 million reviews. Uh, and in terms of mobile search, 68% of all uh, searches on Yelp come from mobile. And Yelp is available in 32 countries and we've been in Singapore for about three years now, so since September 2012. Um, so I wanted to talk about GCD today because it's a really useful tool um, to help keep your app responsive. And by responsive app, um, I mean uh, two things. Uh, to have a responsive app, you should have a responsive UI, and that means that when a user taps on a button in your app, your app should respond almost immediately that uh, you know, your app is going to do something, uh, whatever it is that you know, that button meant to do. And then, if at all possible, you, you should avoid making the user wait. Um, so that, that result that the user wanted, um, you should take as little time as possible to get the user that result. Uh, and if you do those two things, uh, you'll have a responsive app, and you'll avoid having a sad app. Um, so GCD, uh, using GCD to help keep your app responsive starts with, with blocks. And uh, I know some of you all may be newer to iOS development, so I just wanted to quickly go over uh, just what a block is and how you use it. And for everyone else, this will just be a quick uh, refresher. Uh, so a block is just a segment of code, uh, or you might say it's a block of code. And you can take these blocks and pass them around to methods or, or functions. Uh, you can hold, them, hold on to them in variables, and uh, you can you know, execute them later. And you execute or call a block just like you would a C function with parentheses. Uh, so a block in its simplest form just looks like this. Uh, you have the caret, followed by an open curly brace, then you define all of your code, and then you close it out with the curly brace, and that defines a block, so pretty straightforward. All right, so uh, let's just dive into GCD. Um, so if you asked Apple, GCD is a uh, technology that you use in your app to help manage your tasks, and uh, I would say that if you ask an iOS engineer what GCD is, uh, they may tell you, well, it's this thing that I use uh, to help do background processing, right? To help uh, take long-running tasks and run them in the background. Um, but hopefully after this talk, you'll see that uh, with GCD, you can do a lot more than just background processing in terms of managing your tasks. All right, so when you actually go to use GCD, um, you'll notice that it's a C API. Uh, and I put mostly there because uh, GCD does have some support to allow um, uh, GCD structs or objects to be managed uh, by ARC memory management, uh, just like Objective-C objects or, or objects in Swift. Uh, and that's going to be useful to understand when you actually go to integrate GCD into your app. Uh, GCD is also open source, uh, which is a lot different than some of the other Apple frameworks you might be used to working with. Uh, if you want to know how some method works or uh, why a function behaved a certain way, uh, you can just go online and, and look at the source code. Uh, and you can actually browse the source code in your browser, which is pretty nice. And then when you work with GCD, you're going to work with everything in terms of tasks. And a task in GCD is just an empty block. And what I mean by that is it's a block that doesn't take any arguments and doesn't return anything. It's just, just there to help package up all of your work into a neat little task. Uh, so today I'm going to uh, talk specifically about how to use GCD to schedule tasks using dispatch queues. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about uh, how to synchronize multiple tasks when you have multiple concurrent tasks running. We're going to do that with dispatch groups. Uh, and then finally, I'm going to talk about how to serialize asynchronous tasks uh, with dispatch suspend and dispatch resume. All right, so first, um, let's have a look at how you actually go to schedule a task with GCD. So once you have your uh, work kind of neatly bundled up into a task, into one of those blocks, you're going to take that block and put it onto a queue. And GCD has two kinds of queues. Uh, you have the serial queue uh, on top there and a, a concurrent queue. Um, serial queues can run one block at a time, whereas concurrent queues can run multiple blocks at a time. And just like you'd expect from a queue-like structure, 
uh, queues, can, queues run those blocks in first in, first out order. So the first block that you put on one of those queues is going to be one of the first blocks that that queue goes to execute. Uh, and throughout my uh, examples, I'm going to use a, uh, a solid line box there for serial queues and a dashed line box for concurrent queues. Um, so here's just like a pretty straightforward example where I have a serial queue and it has three tasks. And I've just labeled them one, two, and three. And you'll notice the first task there is in green. And that's because this is the next task that this serial queue is going to run, right? Because serial queues, like I said before, uh, can only run one task at a time. Um, and if we had a similar setup with a concurrent queue, um, you might have the first two tasks there in green because a concurrent queue can run multiple tasks at a time. And uh, well, you're never going to know exactly how many uh, tasks a concurrent queue is going to run in any given time. Um, but we just know that it's based on uh, currently available system resources. Uh, and you can kind of see how this uh, model of you know, where GCD forces you to take your tasks and pack them up into these little blo nice blocks and then use these queues to describe how GCD should run your tasks uh, fits really nicely into a situation where your machine has multiple cores, right? Because you've given GCD all this information and then it can decide uh, to take these blocks and distribute them uh, and run, say, as many blocks as you have cores at a time. All right, so now that we just have a basic understanding of uh, what we can do with queues, uh, if you actually wanted to go create one, uh, you'd use this API, uh, dispatch queue create. And the first argument you pass it is a label. And that's just kind of the uh, canonical name for your queue. So if you notice down below, I have two examples where I create queues, and I've just given them the name the letter Q. Uh, but in your apps, you're going to want to use something a little bit more specific than that, uh, I hope. And uh, the reason why that's useful is because uh, what GCD will do is when it actually goes to run one of your tasks and it, and it creates threads to do that, it's going to name the threads based on the queues that your task came from. And that's going to be really useful to help you when you're debugging. Um, so here I have a very exciting uh, screenshot from Xcode. Um, and this is just a screenshot of a backtrace from uh, thread 6. And you'll notice the, uh, we have a block that's running here. And the, uh, it might be kind of hard to see this, but uh, that thread 6 has a name next to it. And it says Q colon sample Q and then in parentheses serial. So we know this block came from a queue that was called sample queue, and it's a serial queue. Um, so just in the stack trace there, if you uh, uh, provide a nice name, you have a lot of information to help you with, uh, in debugging. And secondly, you're going to pass uh, dispatch queue create uh, this dispatch queue adder. And a dispatch queue adder just describes some extra information about your queue. For example, if you want to date a uh, serial or a concurrent queue, that's going to be really important. Uh, and most of the time, you're going to use one of these two mac macros that GCD provides, either dispatch queue serial or dispatch queue concurrent, uh, to tell GCD that you want a serial or a concurrent queue. And another thing that you can describe about a queue is its quality of service class. Um, now, if you haven't seen this quality of service class concept before, um, it's actually being pushed kind of a, a little bit harder in iOS 8. Uh, for those of you who might still be working with iOS 7 apps, I know I am. Um, you can think of a quality service class as just describing the urgency of the queues, uh, sorry, the urgency of the tasks that are going to be run by that queue. Um, and it, or you could also think of it as like a relative priority. So here I have all of the quality of service classes available as of iOS 8, um, and they're in priority order. Uh, and if you look at them, they actually kind of uh, read like some of them are more important than others, right? So user interactive sounds like. Um, you know, queues that had that quality of service class might be more important than, say, one that was quality of service class utility or background. Um, so just by way of example here, uh, I have two queues. These are concurrent queues. And uh, one of them has quality of service class user initiated. The other has quality of service class utility. Uh, and when GCD goes to actually run a block from one of these queues, um, it's going to uh, first look at the queue with quality of service class user initiated uh, because uh, that has um, we've, we've told GCD that this queue has tasks that are, that are more important um, than, for example, the other queue I have here, which is quality of service class utility. Um, and if you wanted to sp actually specify what quality of service class you want your queue to have, uh, you'd use this uh, kind of long function here, di uh, dispatch queue adder make with quality of service class, and, and you pass it the return value of that. 
And here you would pass it uh, what kind of queue you want, so either dispatch queue serial or dispatch queue concurrent, uh, and then the quality of service class uh, that you actually want to assign to your queue, uh, and then the zero argument. Um, now, you'll notice a lot throughout my examples there's this magical zero argument, and that's because um, in GCD, uh, there are a lot of functions where Apple has kind of reserved this argument that just says, uh, we're going to use this sometime in the future for something else, and for now, just pass zero. And uh, you know, it's been since iOS 4, and in the future, it's not here yet. <laughs> uh, so if you don't specify a quality of service class for your queue, uh, it just gets the quality of service class default. All right, so if you actually, if you don't want to uh, go through the trouble of creating a queue, uh, GCD provides five global queues for you. And there are five because there's one per quality of service class, and there are five quality of service classes, so therefore five global queues. Uh, and each of these queues is a concurrent queue, and it runs its tasks on background threads. Uh, now in GCD, we don't typically worry about uh, what threads uh, our tasks are being run on and where. Uh, we only think, consider uh, running tasks in, in the context of what queues we have available. And if you actually wanted to go get one of these queues, you just call this API, dispatch get global queue, uh, pass it the quality of service class that you want, and again, another magical zero argument. Uh, it's kind of cut off. Uh, cool. So then another really important uh, property of queues is that queues can actually target other queues. Uh, and I'm just going to go explain this by way of example. So here I have a queue that I've made with this dispatch queue create call. It's a serial queue, and I have three tasks on it. Now, when you create a queue using dispatch queue create, uh, something that isn't uh, immediately apparent is that that dispatch queue is going to, by default, uh, target the quality of service class default global queue. And what that means is, uh, when queue A actually goes to run one of its blocks, it's just going to take that block and pass it to queue B. Um, so you'll, you'll notice that this has the implication that queues that you create aren't actually responsible for running any of their blocks. They just take their block and pass it off to a target queue. And by default, that's going to be the quality of service class uh, default global queue. So the global queues are actually responsible for running all of the tasks in your app. Um, so if you wanted to actually change the target queue uh, for one of your queues, uh, you would just call this API, dispatch set target queue, uh, pass it the queue that you want to alter, uh, and then pass it the new target queue that you want it to target. Uh, so here I just have a really kind of uh, trivial setup of uh, some queue uh, concurrency, concurrency, ah, concurrency scheme that you might have in your app. And I just have three queues. They're all serial queues. And uh, two of them target the quality of service class utility global queue. And one of them targets the quality of service class utility global, or, sorry, quality of service class user initiated global queue. Um, so you might have this to say if you wanted two queues that, proce that process tasks at the quality of service class uh, utility level and one at the more important quality of service class uh, user initiated level. Uh, so again, just as a really straightforward example of uh, how you might use this quality of service class thing. Um, and I'll have more examples of this later. So I've talked a lot about queues. And uh, now I want to circle back to the tasks themselves and how to actually use them. Uh, so a task in GCD is, is typed as a dispatch block T. And when you actually want to go schedule one of these tasks, or uh, say dispatch a task or a block to a queue, uh, you'll typically call one of these methods dispatch sync or dispatch async. And you'll pass it the queue that you want to dispatch the block to, and the block that you actually want to dispatch that represents your task. Uh, and the only difference between these two here is that uh, dispatch sync is going to block until is going to block on whatever thread you're on until the block is fully finished executing. Uh, whereas dispatch async is just going to dispatch that block to that queue and return immediately. So it's an asynchronous call. And now earlier I told you that there are five global queues, but there's actually a sixth global queue, and it's special because uh, it's the main queue, and the main queue executes all of its blocks on the main thread. And uh, because of that one thread constraint, it's a serial queue. And this is going to be useful for doing UI updates, because you can only do UI updates with UIKit on iOS um, from the main thread. So you're going to use this a lot to say maybe you want to uh, dispatch some block to do some long running maybe image processing work. And then at the end, you uh, show the user that image uh, by dispatching a block back to the main queue that actually shows the user the image you finished uh, processing. 
right? So uh, another example is like you had like a loading spinner. Uh, at the end of your image processing, you know, you would hide it, right? And this really common pattern looks like this. Uh, you have this dispatch async call. You pass it a global queue that you've retrieved. Uh, you do your expensive work, and at the end, you dispatch async a block to the main queue uh, that shows the user that, that work you did. Um, so with uh, UI responsiveness in mind, I'm going to show you this demo app that I have. Uh, and we have, a, we have a tab that shows you a cat pyramid. And you must be wondering what that is. So let's go straight over to my app here. So here I have the cat pyramid. Uh, it's just the same cat over and over again. Uh, and I've scaled it down to different sizes, right? And it's in size order, so it kind of makes a pyramid shape. Um, so if we go look at the code to do that, um, in view will appear here, uh, I just have my process cat images array. And then I enumerate over all the scale factors and cat images um, that I want to scale down to those scale factors. And then I make this uh, API call here that I've made. And this, all the source will be, uh, is on GitHub. So you can see how some of these API calls that I've kind of hidden away um, online, if you'd like. Um, and so this scales down the image. I add it to my process cat images array. Uh, and then I display them in sorted order at the end. Uh, now, some of you may have noticed uh, I'm doing this all in view will appear. And uh, view will appear it, um, has two important things to note about it. It happens on the main thread. And it's also in the critical path of my UI view controller uh, being displayed on screen. And uh, scaling down images is not really something that you'd want to do on the main thread. Uh, depending on the size of the image, uh, the number of images you have, uh, this could take a fair amount of time. And in this case, we'd be uh, you know, delaying our UI view controller uh, from showing up on screen. So we can use GCD to help our uh, UI responsiveness here. And to do that, I'm just going to start by, there we go, code completion, by making a queue for me to use. Uh, dispatch queue. Uh, and we'll call this the image processing queue. And then in my init, I'll just go ahead and create my queue uh, using that API call I was talking about earlier. And again, I'll give it a nice name, image processing queue. And for this example, I'm going to, oh boy. Dispatch Q. Q is very hard to spell. Serial. I'm going to make a serial queue. OK. Uh, and then each time through the loop here, I'm going to uh, actually dispatch the work of uh, scaling down the image onto a background queue. Um, so I'm going to make a dispatch async call, grab my image processing queue, uh, and that's going to just scale down my image. And then when I'm done, I'm going to dispatch async a block back to the main queue uh, that adds my scaled image to the process cat images array. Um, and uh, I'm doing this because uh, NS mutable arrays are not thread safe. And since I have to uh, eventually access my process cat images array uh, on the main thread later anyway to uh, you know, add it to the scroll view, um, I'm just going to go ahead and synchronize all of my accesses to it uh, on the main thread. Um, so once I have all of my, uh, all of my uh, cat image scaling work on this image processing queue, I'm going to go ahead and queue up a completion block behind all of this image processing work. And that completion block, all it's going to do is just dispatch a block to the main queue to actually go ahead and uh, display uh, my, my scaled cat images. Great. Uh, so before, I was keeping track of how long it actually took to, uh, for view will appear to finish. And so before, we were at 0.06 seconds. Um, and so ideally, we're going to uh, improve on that if we don't actually scale all of these uh, on the main thread, right? That works going to happen somewhere else. View will appear should happen faster. So uh, this works like half the time uh, in the simulator. You should really try this. When you're profiling, you should really do it on the device. Because uh, like other things, Xcode can slow it down. Um, but here we did make some improvements. So we went from 0.06 to 0.03. And uh, we still got what we expected in terms of our scaled cats, right? Um, so that is the uh, cat pyramid. And we're going to come back to this later. Um, but that's, that's how you can use GCD to help keep your uh, UI more responsive. 
All right, so uh, now that we know how to use GCD to help keep your app more responsive, um, I want to talk about how to use it to manage situations when you have multiple concurrent tasks going uh, at once. Uh, so I want to start with a problem, and that's uh, user-generated video. So uh, in the Yelp app, you can uh, take videos and then upload them to Yelp. And just before that you actually upload the video, um, we do a few things to that video um, before when you actually go to preview it. And that is, first we crop it uh, to be a square so that it looks nice in any orientation. And then we also generate thumbnails from that video for a keyframe slider so that you can have that nice little slider down there and scrub through your video. And since these tasks are independent of each other, uh, meaning one doesn't depend on the other uh, you know, to start the next task, we should be able to do these two things concurrently. And the problem becomes knowing, uh, how, you know, how do you know when both of these tasks are finished? Right? Because uh, maybe you have a loading spinner, and you want to know, um, you know it's not, we don't know that one of these is going to happen, uh, finish last. So we can't just use the trick I used earlier, where I queued up a completion block kind of behind all the work that was being done. Um, so a common solution to this is you just go ahead and make some flags. Uh, for each task that you have running, you make a Boolean flag. And then at the end, you call a method like this, like hide loading if possible. You check to see if both tasks are done. Uh, and you hide the loading spinner, or generally update the user and say, hey, look, I'm done with all this stuff. Uh, and this totally works. But uh, it gets kind of messy when you have you know, a bunch of other stuff you want to do in your video. Like maybe you want to do some audio processing. Um, or uh, you know, just generally, as you add more tasks, you're going to add more flags and more state to your controller. Uh, and so you know, this kind of starts to get a little out of hand. Um, it's just Boolean flags, so it, it can, you know, it's not super unmanageable. Uh, but GCD provides uh, a much nicer solution for just this sort of problem, and that is dispatch groups. And a dispatch group, just in a thread-safe way, uh, manages a count of all of the tasks that you have running. And so uh, to use them, you just create a dispatch group using this very simple API. It doesn't take any arguments or magical zero arguments. Uh, and it creates an empty group, meaning a group with a task count of zero. And then each time you start at concurrent tasks, a concurrent task, you call dispatch group enter to, set, to tell your dispatch group uh, to increment the number of tasks you have. And then uh, as each one finishes, you call dispatch group leave. Uh, maybe you put that in your completion block for one of your tasks. Uh, and this, this way, you can keep track of when all of your tasks are done. Uh, so in code, you might actually use it like this. So first, you create your group, like I said. Uh, just before each task starts, you call dispatch group enter. Uh, and then maybe in your completion block for each of those tasks, you, make, you add a dispatch group leave call. Uh, and you'd have one dispatch group leave per dispatch group enter call. And then at the end, you make this call dispatch group wait. And this is just going to block uh, whatever thread you're on until the task count is down to zero. So you know all of your tasks have finished. And you know, this, this works, but uh, you may have noticed that you know, I was just talking earlier about you know, block, you know, not blocking the main thread. and, and uh, keeping your, your UI responsive. And if this is happening on the main thread, obviously that's not good. So uh, we, we do know about queues and, and how to use uh, serial and concurrent queues. So maybe I just you know, throw a queue at this, right? I dispatch async a block to some concurrent queue uh, that does this waiting. So now my waiting is happening on a background thread, and I effectively have a completion block. So I know uh, when this dispatch group wait call is finished, right after that, I can dispatch some block to the main queue and hide my loading spinner, for example. Uh, the only problem with this, though, is this is a, a bit wasteful. Uh, we've just dispatched a block to, uh, uh, for GCD to go execute that essentially does nothing. Uh, it's just we're just G making GCD eat up a thread to wait. Uh, and threads are kind of a precious system resource. And if GCD has more threads to work with, um, that's just generally better. So uh, if at all possible, we want to avoid just having blocks that do nothing. And uh, dispatch groups have a solution for just this, and that is dispatch group notify. Uh, and it's basically made for completion blocks. So you uh, pass it your group, uh, pass it the queue that you want your completion block to be called on, and then the actual block that represents your completion block. Uh, and so what this does is uh, when there are no tasks uh, associated with your dispatch group, it's just going to add this block to that queue. And this is an asynchronous call, so it'll return immediately. Uh, you know, no threads blocked, and everyone's happy. Uh, so we're going to use this to uh, add some concurrency to our cat pyramid. All right, so uh, scaling all of these cat images, 
uh, is another is you know it's another task where um, there's no reason why we couldn't be running all uh, scaling all of these images concurrently. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to a concurrent queue. And uh, so that's a pretty simple change. And without changing much code, I'm now going to have all of my uh, cat images, uh, you know, being scaled down in parallel. But now our trick at the end here, where I uh, dispatch async to block, you know, behind all of that cat image uh, processing work, that that block can now be executed also in parallel with everything else. So this is no longer going to be a uh, a reliable completion block. So I'm going to use a dispatch group uh, to fix this. Uh, group and I'll call it dispatch group create. And then just before we uh, dispatch each of our asynchronous tasks or uh, our concurrent tasks, I'm going to call dispatch group uh, enter, pass it my group. And then once each one is done, I will call dispatch group leave. OK, so now I'm keeping track of all of my tasks. And at the end, I can just clean up some code here and make a dispatch group notify call. I pass it my group. Uh, I pass it the main queue, which is where I want my completion block to be executed. And then I can just delete a lot of this code. And now I have a completion block that gets called in the main queue that's going to add all of my process cat images once all of my concurrent tasks are done. Um, so we'll just kind of sanity check, make sure um, the concurrency I did didn't like mess up our tab or anything. And here we still have our cats in the order we expect. Well, great. So now we've kind of added some concurrency to this. And if you work with dispatch groups some more, you'll kind of notice that uh, this, you have this boilerplate where you call dispatch group enter, dispatch async, then at the end, dispatch group leave. And you'll do this a lot. And this is so common that there's actually an API you can use with dispatch groups um, that does this for you. And it's called dispatch group async. And you, instead, you just it works exactly like dispatch async, only it does all of the above, and you get to delete a bunch of code. So now uh, this is just going to call dispatch group enter, dispatch the block, and then when the block is finished, it calls dispatch group leave for each of those. So I'll just run this again, again, just to make sure that uh, my assumptions were right and everything's still working. So great. So that's how you use dispatch groups. Cool. So that is cat pyramid only with some concurrency thrown in. All right, so now I want to talk about how to serialize asynchronous tasks with GCD. And you may be thinking, well, we've been talking a lot about uh, asynchronous tasks already. And what I mean by this is uh, there's actually two kinds of tasks, right? There's synchronous tasks, which fit really well into a block. Uh, when the block is finished, you know the task is fully completed. There's, you know, everything about that task uh, that represented the work you wanted is totally done, nothing left to do. Uh, asynchronous tasks, that may not necessarily be true. And an example of this is, a, is an animation. Uh, animation calls are not synchronous. Uh, when, you make an anim when you make a call to start an animation in UIKit, it just starts the animation, and then sometime in the future, you know your animation is done because a completion block gets called. Uh, and this, is, this can be kind of tricky to manage in GCD because uh, if you were to do this inside of a block, uh, you, know, you're, you would make the call to start the animation, and then your block would basically return immediately, and then your block would be finished, but your animation might still be going because you know, animations take time. So looking at this animation example, here I have a two-step animation. Uh, and it just has this green square, and all it does is rotate. And then for step two, it moves across the screen. And this code in, in, uh, you know, with UIKit's animation APIs might look like this, where if you tell it to start an animation that does the rotation, and then in, in the completion block for the animation, uh, you do the part where it moves the square across the screen. And if you say you wanted to repeat this animation a couple of times, you would copy and paste this code into the completion block of the last one and just do that over and over again. And then uh, you, know, you, get that, you get that thing where uh, you know, where you have your indentation going all the way across the screen and everybody's unhappy. So we're going to now look at how to use GCD to manage tasks like this um, and uh, make an animation queue using GCD. Um, so one other tab I had in my app here, in my demo app, is this animations tab. And when I click on this, you're going to see the green square again, and it's just going to rotate and move down the screen. So uh, pay attention because it, it happens kind of quick. So. There it goes, the rotate and move. So pretty simple. And if we look at the view controller that does this, 
here I have my, uh, in my view did appear, I create a green square view, and then I make my animation call. And I've, I've kind of wrapped up the animation uh, somewhere else, and the actual animation code somewhere else. And as I was saying before, if you wanted to repeat this animation, you might do something like this, right? And you just, you know, over and over again, as many times as you want the animation to repeat, and this is kind of a mess. Um, so what we can do is uh, use a serial queue uh, with GCD to help us out. So I'm going to head, go ahead and make a for loop. And we're going to repeat this animation four times. And each time through the loop, I'm going to dispatch a single block to my animation queue. Uh, and this is just going to queue up my, uh oh, missed some code down here. Uh, this is going to queue up my animation uh, and put it on this queue, right? Uh, now, I, I told you all earlier that um, that queues that you create, they target this uh, one of the global queues, and global queues run, run blocks on background threads. Uh, so this, on its own, won't work because uh, we can't do um, we can't do UI view animations on a background thread, right? Uh, UI kit specifically forbids it. So we can fix this by using uh, by changing our target queue, and we can just have our animation queue target the main queue instead. And so this is going to have the effect of any time I just patch a block to this animation queue, that block's actually going to be then passed off to the main queue to actually be run. Uh, so now I'm kind of on my way to making uh, an animation queue. OK, so um, each time through this loop, we're going to dispatch our uh, animation code. And let's just see how this looks uh, with what we have so far. Um, so here we have our cats again. And uh, you know what we want in the end is you know four uh, four animations. That, what you just saw before repeated. So rotate, move, rotate, move four times. And what we actually get is something super weird, uh, where it just rotates 360 degrees and moves all the way down the screen. And that's because again, this is an asynchronous uh, operation. This starts the animation, the block returns immediately. Dispatch queue moves on to executing the next one. This all happens so fast, and then UIKit just kind of intelligently combines all of them to sh show you uh, what you saw there. So to deal with a situation like this, you could maybe try to use a dispatch group, but then you're going to ha hang your main thread, uh, and it doesn't really scale well when you want to repeat um, <coughs> when you want to repeat things like this. Um, so what you can do is actually just suspend your animation queue. Oops, uh, and the call is pretty simple. You just call dispatch suspend. Uh, pass it your animation queue, or your queue. And what this does is uh, the queue becomes suspended, so it won't actually execute any more blocks until you resume it again. Uh, but you, it's still OK to uh, add more blocks to that queue. And it doesn't affect the current block, because the current block's already executing. And then in our completion block, when we know it's safe to move on to the next animation, we can uh, dispatch resume our animation queue and say, OK, it's OK to move on to the next thing. Um, so let's have a look and see how this looks. OK, so now if you go to our Animations tab, we get four nice animations. Uh, they're all queued up. And if we wanted to do this like you know, six times, we just change the variable instead of doing our awful copy-paste. All right, so that's how to use uh, GCD for more than just background processing uh, and to help you manage asynchronous tasks. Um, so before I go, I just wanted to uh, quickly uh, go over some caveats with GCD. Um, cleanup in GCD can be tricky at times. Uh, most of the time, it's not. Uh, but just two examples. Uh, it, when you have a dispatch group that's supposed to be keeping track of all of your concurrent tasks, um, if, you, uh, if that dispatch group becomes dialect, uh, meaning it gets thrown out um, while there are still concurrent tasks associated with that group, um, it will crash your app. I don't actually know. I actually realized after I did this. I don't actually know if it'll throw an exception because this is a C API and there aren't ex exceptions in, in C. <laughs> uh, but it does crash your app, and I have backtraces to prove it. Uh, but this typically means that there's a bug in your app. Uh, you typically wouldn't want to uh, deallocate some controller that was in the middle of doing all this concurrent stuff. Um, so typically, you just code around it, and it works out pretty well. Uh, the other thing to know is that when you add a block to a queue, that queue is retained by GCD regardless of how you're managing it. Um, so most of the time, this is fine, because if you added a block to a queue, that generally means you wanted to run it. Uh, and so eventually, that block is going to be uh, executed by the queue, and then uh, eventually, that will exhaust all of its blocks, and it'll go away. 
Um, but you can run into some issues with this, obviously, if you use the dispatch suspend and resume APIs and say you never resumed a queue that still had tasks on it, and, and then you're going to leak a queue uh, and, you know, sad times. Um, and finally, when considering uh, APIs and, and frameworks to use uh, what, for managing tasks in your app, um, GCD is really great for, um, you know, really small synchronous tasks or, um, you know, really straightforward, simple asynchronous tasks. Um, and I would even argue that uh, for synchronous tasks, you can pretty much throw anything at GCD. Uh, but if you want to have something to better manage and encapsulate the uh, a really complex task, uh, NS Operation Queue and NS Operation are really good APIs to look at for that. Uh, also, GCD has no cancel support, so once you add a block to a queue, um, that's it, it's gone, and you can't cancel it. Uh, and if you need cancel support and you want to be able to respond to canceling, and it's operations there for you. Um, so there's a few other things you can do, do with GCD that I didn't go over. Um, you can, if you were like working on a cache or something, uh, there's dis the dispatch barrier APIs to help you with working, uh, using queues to implement efficient reader-writer schemes. And then more for, uh, less so with, for iOS development, but you can use GCD to read and write data efficiently with dispatch IO and dispatch data. Uh, and you can also respond to low-level system objects like uh, mock ports with dispatch source. Um, so I just wanted to quickly mention those since I didn't really cover GCD totally exhaustively. Um, so that's it. Uh, these are some resources. Uh, definitely don't copy those down because you can just Google them. Uh, and then uh, that's the uh, GitHub repo where I'm going to uh, push the solutions after the talk. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Yeah. Uh, for uh, the GCD report, uh, is there a way to uh, de uh, define like, how many concurrent tasks can be run at the same time? Like the numbers of concurrent If you wanted to know the number of concurrent tasks? Like, uh, like you have like 100 in URLs and you want to like, uh, download only two URLs concurrently. Ah, OK. So like NS operation queues, like max concurrent operation count. Yeah. yeah so yeah, you'd have to implement it, that yourself. Um, yeah, there's no way to easily do that. Uh, like you would just set a property with NS operation queue. Yeah, so if you wanted that kind of like rate limiting, uh, yeah, definitely NS operation queue, probably not GCD. Yeah. Well, since the block will be called like a right? Mm -hmm. Do we need to like do the wikify, stonkify dance if we call self inside the block? In the completion block? Um, it, it like a weak self and a strong self to, you know, to like yeah. break the everything cycle. Uh, it depends. Typically with asynchronous blocks, like when you use dispatch async, most of the time you don't need to, uh, but it, it really depends, yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't really cover the like, man management side of blocks. Um, but yeah, definitely something to watch out for. Cool. I think that's it. Oh, oh sorry, yeah. Um, so I, I haven't worked with Reacto, Reactive Coco personally. Um, I've, I've read the README page on GitHub about it. Uh, that's about as far as, as I got, because um, I haven't had any like personal projects where I wanted to try it out yet. Um, as far as performance, yeah, obviously since I haven't used it, it makes it really hard to speak about that. Um, I don't know, GCD is, is written in C. Uh, it's, it's like pretty low overhead. Um, I haven't measured it myself, but at the, at the talks at WWDC, apparently like uh, Dispatch Queue Create, for example, um, Feels like it, it should be heavier, but apparently it's very cheap to create and destroy queues. Um, so generally, it's supposed to be a pretty low overhead API. Yeah. Uh, 